Good morning, everybody. Good morning, audience. Welcome to our second PIH talk for 22. Really like to welcome you to quite an interesting uh, topic today on energy efficiency in the industry. Um, and uh, I have to say I'm quite surprised about the number of registrations we have received, um, close to 100, which clearly shows that this topic uh, shows really some interest uh, in our ecosystem of manufacturing companies and industry in Luxembourg. Um, just to introduce myself, my name is Joe Clemens. I'm part of the Luxembourgish Digital Innovation Hub. Uh, we are part of the Lux Innovation uh, Organization. I I actually started last year um, at Lux Innovation in that position of senior advisor for digitalization. And uh, my background is basically automation, IT, quality management, management. And I have worked for many years for international and also for some SMEs here in Luxembourg. Uh, before we go into the topic, um, just uh, like to explain the tool a little bit. Uh, you find on the lower right hand side, you will find uh, the buttons for chat, which is the usual chat function as you know it for most other systems as well. You can also contact uh, to individuals if you like. We have a poll section. Actually, you will already find two pre-prepared polls inside, but we will come to the polls as part of the presentation. Um, and we have a questionnaire section where you can raise your questions, uh, particularly when the speakers are presenting uh, their uh, information. And we will have after each speaker, uh, except for the sneak preview, a five minutes uh, Q&A session. Now, before moving into the topic of today, just uh, for those uh, that do not know the Digital Innovation Hub, actually we are a small team uh, led by Arno Lambert and my colleague Nicola. Um, and we are basically the, the central part of connecting all the different actors in the ecosystem of manufacturing companies here in Luxembourg. Can be SMEs, can be larger industrial companies, ICT providers, system houses, investors, and research institutions. And uh, we are trying to support on an individual basis uh, the companies in their effort to renovate or to go for digital transformation. And also as part of Lux Innovation Services, of course, uh, if possible, we like also to help you to get uh, into programs uh, from national or European state aid programs. But we are not only looking for uh, on, or focusing on Luxembourg, uh, we also go beyond the, uh, the borders look and also trying to build up a network in the greater region of uh, of our uh, area here so in a nutshell basically what we are trying to achieve here is to, to inform and inspire people to go for digital transformation share experience solutions um, i think today's dih talk is a good example of that and Finally, we like to get engaged in, in, in the way we support you, which can be programs that are relevant for the entire ecosystem of manufacturing companies, but it can also be individual support to individual companies when specific uh, challenges come up. Just to give um, just uh, two examples um, here, one thing we, we had uh, done and realized last year, um, which was a bit more under the engagement. If you like to support, you have also first to identify your, your ecosystem. That's what we did with great help from our cluster managers and our marketing intelligence department. So we have identified more than 450 industrial companies or manufacturing companies here in Luxembourg and more than 250 providers in that area. Um, this information you can, as said, already, already find on our web pages. And one of the uh, 
initiatives we have in the area of inform and inspire is certainly our monthly webinar that we call DIH Talk. Today is one of them. And I like also to invite those that have an interesting a story, success story, uh, experience to share, please feel invited to contact us uh, and become also a presenter of one of these sessions we have planned for the rest of the year. Because this is the critical, uh, most critical thing in the overall uh, inform and inspire uh, area that we make sure that we share good experience to the others just to follow um, uh, the good examples. So today, the topic is on energy efficiency for the industry. Actually, a topic that started to come up nearly in all the client meetings we had in December, January timeframe. Therefore, we put it on our agenda. And meanwhile, due to the very unfortunate Ukraine crisis, of course, uh, energy dependency, energy management is uh, all over. And that shows also the relatively high number of participants we have today. And what's behind it? Uh, I think energy efficiency has a lot to do with uh, digitalization and integration, particularly when it comes to the production floor. But of course, it also applies to building management in general. Because at the end of the day, it is really the optimal use of material resources and energy for our companies. Um, and there are certainly a few ingredients, and that's what we will hear and listen today, that make something like that successful, that the systems or methodologies in that area will actually deliver um, sustained um, and cost savings uh, in that area, particularly when it comes to EMS system, uh, electricity, um, energy management systems that are deeply connected, for example, to a MES system, a warehouse management system, a production planning system, or even preventive maintenance that can help you to save costs. Now, um, to the first poll, again, you will find the poll in the poll se sections. Uh, it's a simple question. We just like to know from the audience uh, what is your current status on energy efficiency in your own organization? Is it just a concern? Did you already plan to do something? You have something maybe in operation already, or maybe you have already successes. And we would appreciate your answer uh, by now or during the next uh, 50 minutes of this session. First, I'd like to introduce Petro Rodriguez uh, from, the, uh, from the list. And Petro has a long experience in energy management. Um, actually, Petro received um, his master and PhD in electrical engineering, uh, electrical engineering from the University of Catalonia. He had several postdoc uh, research positions, for example, at the Virginia Tech at uh, MIT in Boston, several directoral uh, positions in, in different organizations afterward when it comes uh, with a strong focus on intelligent clean energy uh, systems. He even got rewarded in that area and I'm pretty sure that um, Petro as a, a lecturer and an enthusiast, I would say, for this topic will have quite something interesting to share with us. Petro, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jacqueline. Let me share my presentation. Yeah, let me stop my one, just a second. Yeah. Okay. So, Joaquin, thank you very much for your very kind introduction. Uh, and thank you for this invitation, this opportunity for, for, yeah, for presenting my perspective. As the first speaker, I will try to give a general, let's say, introduction of energy management systems or energy efficiency improvement in the industry sector, not only considering the main factoring process, okay, my, I'm sure my colleagues we'll get in deep on that and, and and we will be able to 
discuss and discover interesting aspects and innovation at such a level, but I would also like to talk about what happens or what is the relationship of industry with the environment, with the neighborhood, with the electrical grid, with other industries, okay? I mean, therefore, I would like to give a vision or provide a flavor about, well, what would be the future of such a, a let's say, energy transition in industry that could be not only related to the improvement of efficiency of the process itself, but also uh, how the energy efficiency should be considered from the, uh, let's say, interoperability with other uh, issues around, okay? In such a way, I mean, when we talk about energy management, uh, it's a matter of observability, okay? When we talk about energy in general, okay? In any process, it's a matter of knowing where, when, how, and why energy is used, okay? In order to improve efficiency, reduce cost, and uh, improve sustainability. That is particularly relevant in industry, and uh, industry changed a lot uh, in the last decades, okay? Therefore, now managing energy in industry means uh, it's necessary to know very well uh, how the process is operating, the state of the process and the trends in the process, okay? Which requires to deal with real-time energy data, to analyze such a data in a very precise manner, not only considering conventional methods, but as we will see other uh, techniques should be used, and to be able to take actions, uh, let's say, in the very short time, okay? Um, of course, I mean, with different, let's say, time horizons, okay? So doing that, that uh, requires digitalization. I mean, it's not possible to face up, to face up such a challenge without digitalization. digitalization will allow us, let's say, uh, participating in the supply and utilization and exploitation of the energy in our process, uh, in our industry process, uh, which is a process which is characterized by a huge increasing uh, volume of uh, big data, okay? I mean, the, the, and uh, all the uh, processes at all the industry level are, are let's say, uh, uh, affected by or are uh, generating data, therefore there is a huge amount of data in the, in the process today. Um, it would be necessary to use advanced analytics, as I mentioned, and uh, is, uh, the, we will deal with a wide connectivity, okay? So let me just go to the to some, let's say, a schematic uh, uh, structure of what we are talking here about, okay? The first matter of uh, energy, uh, industrial energy digitalization from the perspective of efficiency would be to collect information about the process, okay, sensor meters interfaces with different uh, different energy uh, inputs, okay, which are not only related to the process itself, but also related to what is around, okay. The next one could be a matter of digitalizing, okay, uh, or sorry, analyzing such information by using, I don't know, optimization algorithms with different techniques, but more and more relevant is the use of mature learning and artificial intelligence techniques that will allow us uh, to 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 make conclusion or to take action or yes yeah, so or to obtain information from processes that are not easy or, or they cannot be modeled by using conventional techniques okay we learned in the last uh, years okay not everything could be modeled not all the models are precise enough and it's possible also to manage processes based on data okay based on uh, observing the behavior or the performance of the of the system and to make decisions based on that okay of course simulation is an essential tool for that okay and um, these processes are getting more and more uh, let's say complex and, and dynamics in the last years because new players okay are 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 getting into the picture okay power electronics i mean the active processing of energy in, in, in systems is a reality today control distributed control okay interconnected controllers for processing such energy and such interoperability is a must okay um these processors should be processing this new or working with these new sources okay energy will be coming from conventional sources but we have the new ones okay we will have renewable energies with the hidden variability we will have a storage 
we need to know how to manage such a storage in the near future such a storage will be a must in industry and and new loads okay electrical vehicles and uh, parametrizable loads after loads okay and in addition we should consider what happened with the environment around okay what not only what is happening inside or internally in the company regarding our manufacturing process but also what is the relationship with the environment okay how this company or how the industry should be interacting with the digital markets real-time markets local markets which could be reacting in very real time and it's necessary to participate on that in such a way in the using such a digitalization for 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 interacting uh, in the in the most optimal manner okay which is actually directly related to the efficiency of our industry process okay and i mean the, the energy supply and also opening new new opportunities and new income streams for example providing services to the grid okay we will come up with that later i mean i mean yes i mean supporting the system operator for improve the grid performance by using the flexibility and the controllability the modulation capacity of our of our process and all that at the end of the day will give rise to improving the reliability and the resiliency of the system, the energy system in global, not only for the company, but in also for the ecosystem, the energy ecosystem around. Okay. Uh, so we should understand system efficiency. Uh, we should understand, uh, let's say, industrial energy digitalization, not only from the perspective of improving the efficiency of the, of the manufacturing process, but also considering or taking into account or analyzing in detail the flexibility of our process from two perspectives, of course, for improving, let's say, the, the, the efficiency of the process itself, but also for providing services to the energy system as a global, uh, was a global uh, let's say, problem, okay? That would allow us to reduce cost, to improve the system performance. At the, at, it, would be, it would be possible to defer our investments in the grid Okay, to improve uh, or to increase penetration of renewables, um, to enhance the energy independence of our system, and to empower industry within the new, uh, let's say, energy ecosystem. I mean, or to integrate energy in such an energy transition that we mentioned. Of course, this all this interaction of energy of the industry with the environment will generate new income streams. But what is absolutely necessary. For doing that as a first step is to really know very well how our process, how, how, how the industry process, the manufacturing process works, okay? I will not get in very de de details here because I'm sure my colleagues will provide much more and interesting information about this. I just categorize here the, the applications that we could uh, work with. Uh, at, the, at the energy management in industry in three levels, okay, by using the, the, the well-known automation parameter based on this ISA 95 model. Uh, and there, there is a first layer, most of the providers eh, of EMS for industry, they have solutions which are dealing with the energy process at the, at the process level, at the close to the physical level, close to the station, close to the let's say the the, the the scale at the end of the day of the system which is analyzing or is collecting data about the different assets uh, uh, related in the in the let's say in the main factory process the second layer is is more is a company-wide energy management i mean it's necessary is uh, so they are applications focused on analyzing power flows um and and let's say i'm making decisions based on the um, or integrating let's say the energy better into the main factory execution systems and at the end the last layer could be more focused at the business oriented energy management management where really it could be necessary to to know i mean i don't know cost escalating out uh, because of system out of control or expensive peak loads or I don't know, a, a normal, uh, uh, let's say, sequences in the process. I mean, all of this should be properly properly analyzed at the, from the very high level because at the end of the day, all this information is essential for interacting or interoperating the industry with its environment. I mean, for, uh, for optimizing the procurement of energy, what are the most suitable contracts, what are the most suitable tariffs, what 
high is the optimization level that we should, uh, let's say, or, or, or the most, uh, let's say, interesting or optimal solution that should or decision should be taken in order to to achieve uh, or to yeah to 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 get the most okay from the, the digital markets um, and also if we are considering the industry would be also able to provide services to the grid is essential to have a very detailed characterization of the energy processes inside in order to know what is the what are such a services that could be provided okay in such a way i would like to move now out of the industry as i out of the manufacturing process and i would like to talk a little bit about how industries could be uh, let's say interrelated each other in the near future okay i mean i would like to talk a little bit about energy communities which is a let's say a popular topic today and that would be affecting to industry i mean in energy communities it's organizing uh, a collective users industries uh, organizations okay in order to uh, to collaborate in order to use energy uh, locally so they will allow participating uh, different industries uh, today uh, uh, industries are are used or are considered uh, let's say consumers in some case industries are supporting the grid but at the end of the day are grid dependent elements okay but in the future energy will get a new role okay or a different role thanks to energy communities in energy communities there are different figures okay there are different uh, let's say uh, yeah different roles okay that should, could be considered as soon as we integrate a capacity for producing surplus of energy i don't know in mean, some industries maybe during the weekend or maybe during the sun hours of the day it's possible to have a surplus of energy therefore uh, uh there are different modalities okay or different ways of uh, integrating uh, or managing such energy maybe as a self-consumption unit or maybe as a shared self-consumption system or maybe as an energy community process okay i mean depending on the depending on the on the, i mean if we talk about an individual individual uh, user or individual entity or we talk about a collective entity even though they are all sharing the same building as the case of the regulation uh, here in luxembourg or maybe we talk about an energy community in such a case there will be some benefits for managing energy or for changing energy between the different users okay and this is this is uh, well this uh, information that you have now on the screen is, is just from the preliminary draft of the of the regulations for energy communities that luxembourg will publish uh, soon actually and uh, well this is a, 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 a regulation which is still Let's say that will evolve a lot like in other countries in Europe. Okay, it is a first step. Uh, this, this, uh, let's say this sector is evolving uh, very fast. Okay, um, and there will be some benefits for industries. Okay, or for consumers, industries working together as a community or as a, as a, as a self consumption uh, group. Okay. Uh, mainly because uh, some taxes will be reduced, uh, taxes in the energy itself and also taxes in the distributing and transporting such energy will, will improve the business case, okay, and will give rise to uh, potential uh, new solutions, okay, so or new, new business cases are use cases, okay. So, but this is uh, a perspective which is mainly focused on how to use energy or how to share energy between different users, but energy communities go beyond that okay how digitalization and this is actually what i would like to stress how digitalization could help industries to get adapted to the new reality that will come in the next i don't know years okay so in such a case it would be possible to have local trading markets okay between different energies okay by using digital platforms energy with surplus of uh, of uh, renewables for example would be able to provide uh, let's say energies in a competitive prices to others okay what will give rise as i mentioned to very interesting business cases that uh, at the end of the day justify yeah justify the the, the yeah justify this uh, let's say change of these these new models and in addition these energies of these industries will be also able to provide services to third parties okay the uh, industries in the future 
will be able to uh, provide energy as well to users around which are integrated in such an industrial energy community. This is something that mm, today maybe could be a little bit futuristic, but it's a reality already in some other uh, countries and geographies, even at the pilot level, okay? Uh, but it's something that we will be able to use to see very soon, okay? Um, finally, for closing, the, I would like to talk about, as I mentioned, these industries will not be only able to share energy and to trade energy each other, but they will be able also to provide services to the grid operator, to the, I mean, the grid, uh, the, particularly flexibility. Flexibility is a matter of modulating amplitude, modulating the time, the energy is consumed of the liver, and the dynamics of that, okay? There are different mechanisms for doing that, but industry is one of the most relevant demands in the energy system okay in different countries they 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 represent a big share in such a in the demand in the power demand of the system and so they, they if they are able to modulate the their consumption their let's say their duty cycle and also the dynamics they could significantly uh, support the grid and of course they will generate a new income stream because such a services will be uh, will be paid actually or will have a specific market for okay so not all the industry will be able to work at the same level therefore there will be some industries as a case of food machinery paper industry which is easy to buffer products and to have parallel lines will will be able to provide more flexibility services um yeah i finished um Others, like chemical, steel, and metal energies, uh, we are working currently on that here with some uh, companies working on steel, which are more difficult and it's necessary to have a very detailed, and this is why I mentioned in the beginning, it's essential to have a very deep knowledge on the process itself, the main factory process, in order to provide such a services, okay? Uh, other industries like aluminium, maybe it's different, but if we deal with the steel, this is an important topic, okay? So with this, I finish my presentation. What I like just to, to highlight is, well, this matter of energy efficient or digitalization in energy management systems is not only a matter of, is not only a matter of, let's say, improving efficiency in the manufacturing process, but also considering the new horizons and the new opportunities that the energy transition opens to uh, the industry sector. And I think this is something all us should be very, uh, let's say, aware about and very, uh, let's say, uh, interested on, okay? Because they, it will, let's say, generate new use cases, new business opportunities in a very near future. So, well, with this, I finish. Thank you very much for this opportunity. And now I am open to, to questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Peter. Very interesting, very interesting. I, have I have to say. I did particularly like the uh, intention, what you mentioned on energy communities. And since we have not received questions yet, uh, maybe a question from my side. Do we have in Luxembourg already these kind of communities existing or in preparation? Or is there a concept uh, or, uh, already behind? Yeah, well, the, the the energy communities will be a reality in whole Europe because it was it's a, there is a directive from Brussels that was uh, approved in 2019 or 2020 and trans 2019 I think and transferred to the state members in Luxembourg. Is still low is under discussion, but I guess it I mean it would be enforced soon. There are some pilots, some, uh, let's say, some boxes, okay, which are in, in preparation to demonstrate uh, the, the effectiveness. Um, yeah, uh, the energy communities today, as in other countries, in the beginning, they are, let's say, reduced in terms of power, in terms of distance, in terms of voltage, okay. Well, I mean, I know well cases from Spain or from Portugal where in the beginning were like here okay 500 or 300 meter distances low voltage interconnection 100 kilowatts but they changed it very quickly because as soon as the regulation was in four and as soon the business case uncertainty was over this was a sector that grew a lot because the interest of the investment uh, the return on investment rate reduced dramatically when these internal uh, let's say markets are enforced or are enabled um, and the regulations are, are changing very quickly. Therefore, I would say, yes, we have already 
some uh, initiatives. We are working with Beckerich, uh, for example, uh, commune in this direction, uh, uh, let's say promoting some energy communities. Um, and I hope uh, in the resident, well, residential and industrial, actually, there are some of them which are more focused on residential use. Um, but just, yes, I mean, there are some initiatives, not yet uh, um, a well established reality because their regulation is not that. I mean, we have some boxes. Okay. I got a question from Stefan here uh, asking if uh, this initiative can be go beyond energy and also involves the digitalization um, and uh, also supply chain for critical material. I would say what is led by you, I assume, uh, Petro is focusing on the energy, I would assume. Yes, I mean, in my case, I am focused on the energy, but at the end of the day, energy is part of the functional chain of the process, okay? Therefore, from my side, uh, I mean, this digitalization will be affecting at different level. From my side, I can I can just talk about the translation, for example, of the process of raw materials into energy. Okay, I mean, and in such a case, I, I agree. I mean, this is something that there is a connection, but I consider later some of my colleagues maybe will be able to answer more at the, or more specifically to or, yeah, to, to how how the the the, the, the how other vectors, for example, raw materials of the value chain, how they could be, uh, let's say, affected or improve it, okay, in terms of energy efficiency. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. I think for the sake of time, unfortunately, we have to stop here, but there are also no further questions. And please raise your questions in the question tab, not via the chat, because there I run risk uh, to overlook something. Petro, thanks again. And actually, the question from Stefan is actually a good uh, point also to, to lead to the next speaker. But before going there, um, just to ask the, the, you for your feedback on the second one. Uh, it's about our uh, survey that we have launched uh, from the digitalization hub as, together with the FIDEL six weeks ago. And we really like to encourage all manufacturing companies, particularly uh, also from the greater region, to respond because that feedback is very essential for us to ensure that we provide also the right support activities to the to your ecosystem, actually. And therefore, um, first answer the question, but I know already from uh, from those that answered already, 50% were not aware that we have this um, survey ongoing. So please feel encouraged and go for this survey. Uh, actually, the results will be presented during the upcoming Smart Manufacturing Week. I have more on that in a moment as well. But let's move to our second speaker, which is Gerd de Kronik from Siemens. Uh, Gerd, welcome to our DIH talk. And I think um, knowing your presentation already, it's actually a good connection to what um, Pitro has just shown, because here we go now more, I would say, in directly in the connection of industrial and production processes. Just to introduce Gerd, Gerd has a, is an industrial engineer in electrical mechanics combined with an uh, MBA, and he, I would call him a long, long service soldier of Siemens because he started actually his career within Siemens already in 89, and he had all kind of positions starting from purchasing sales product management, and meanwhile he is heading the unit uh, for industrial automation for the Benelux area, and um, we will surely get a lot of insights in from the uh, from the experience uh, from Gerd in his presentation. Gerd, the floor is yours. Thank you, Jo, for um, the introduction. Um, and I hope I will meet your expectations. Let me share my screen first. If 
everything is working well, then you should be able to see the start of my presentation. Good. Anybody maybe say whether this is correct or not? It's visible, yes. It's visible. Okay, thank you very much. Morning, everybody. Um, so, um, as you already mentioned, um, he asked me to give a presentation on what we do with energy management and that from uh, an uh, aspect of uh, the industry. And you, in your introduction, you also mentioned that this is a, a topic that is uh, popping up uh, very recently. And I can only confirm that. Um, this is um, uh, a slide that I took from a presentation from just three years ago. And, and when we were talking in industry, what, what were the targets of our customer? They were talking on how to increase the speed of their production lines. They were looking and on how can we improve the flexibility on our production lines? How can we make a faster switches from the one to the other product? Quality was, of course, already for a long time, a um, very important topic. But then the part of efficiency was mainly how many pieces can I get out of my production lines? How can I um, optimize those? And on top of that, there was also the part of um, security. Security remains, IT security, very important um, because a lot of companies get hacked in the meantime. But if I compare this slide to um, something that we do this year, then you see all of a sudden that there is sustainability and profitability are also popping up as one of the key elements that we see in industry. And this is only three years ago. And it should not surprise us because if I go back, and this is a slide where you see a lot of numbers from 2015. So in 2015, if you look at the top right, you will see that there was the United Nations Climate Summit that said, okay, good, we have to do something to reduce um, the uh, global warming to a maximum of two uh, degrees. And industry had to really um, yeah, do actions to uh, reduce it. Uh, by the way, Siemens is uh, trying to be uh, energy neutral by 2030. There is also the part of the energy, energy transition that um, Pedro has uh, indicated a lot in his presentation. Um, 2015, this is a number that I have uh, in Germany was uh, at 31%. At but a lot of things that, that we see now appearing is, is what you see on, on the right bottom is that in 2015, only 59% of the people mentioned that um, energy was something that was important, but it's, it was one of the different topics. If you compare this now to analysis that um, the uh, European Union uh, has uh, now done, 93%, and let me just pick my pointer. So 93% of the people think it's a serious problem and um, if you uh, look in different countries, uh, and this is a, a study from July 2021, so less than a year ago, maybe it's even higher. If you look right now, who thinks it's the most important topic that we as a human or we as an industry should focus on? Just look at the numbers. If I take the number from Luxembourg, 24% of all people say this is the most important part. But we as people from, from industry itself, um, we, there is another factor that is very important, and that is, of course, the energy cost. And if you look at the evolution of the prices between 2000 and 2015, we were talking about an annual increase of around about 6%. Inflation was around about 2% or something like that, 6%. Yeah, it was a little bit more expensive, but not that critical. But if you look right now at the evolution of, of the prices itself, I took three years in a row um, the month of April, and these are the prices that you pay for in euros per megawatt hour. And you saw an evolution that is was between zero and, and, and 50 euros that you paid in April 2020, just two years ago. Last year, the same month, it had already gone up, and then I don't know why they changed the axis on, uh, this is, by the way, a chart from Fraunhofer Institute, um, the chart is now on the left side, so the price is over here. So you see that's already evolving from between 50 and 100. So that was one year ago. If you look at the prices right now, then you see that they are now between 200 and 300. So in two years time, prices have gone up by a factor eight, 800 percent price increase. So it should not surprise us that in industry, everybody is looking at it. How can we work on that to improve that? And um, for that, there is a standard, the ISO 5001, but it's a process that you not only see in energy management. Basically, it is um, start with acquiring your energy data, and uh, Pedro has mentioned that in his uh, presentation as well. 
do an analysis of the data, then do a planning of an energy uh, measurement, then look what your biggest consumers are, take some action, and then look back on your data to see whether the improvement has taken effect, yes or no, and what the next step could be to uh, improve your process. And um, for this, um, Peter also mentioned the ISA 95 model. Um, I've put it in a little bit with what you see in industry. So basically what you have is you have the sensors in the bottom, then you have the controllers that can capture the data itself. And then over, already over here have some sort of a uh, visualization about it, or even go to, like uh, Peter also mentioned, the MES layer um, where you can really do the control and, and so on. But how do you start a thing like that? So this is uh, why we said, okay, good, why not take a reference from something we did in our own factory. Um, so um, I would recommend you uh, the whole process that I will be explaining right now is in very much more detail on this website. So go into it and, and, and feel free. You can surf over it. There's some movies over there. Um, but what we did is we had basically no transparency on anything in our production lines. You have to, um, this is um, a production where we built electrical motors. Um, uh, for instance, the motors that are used for um, the Siemens trains that also run in uh, in Luxembourg. So um, what you see over there is that they had hardly anything on, on, on measurement. And what they did is in, in February 2021, they decided 77 of old production machines, let's try and capture the data. And um, this is what we then call the brownfield. So there were lots of plants, there were the punching installations, there were ovens and those kind of things. Let's, and the first thing we did is that let's try to capture the data itself. And to show you that it's not always a rocket science, let me just um, have the guy from, from the plant itself explain a small thing how he did that. Existing machines and brownfield applications are very important. We want to know how efficiently they run and how we can optimize them. To that end, we have already connected 75 machines to Energy Manager and can now evaluate their efficiency retrospectively as well. We used a simple solution to integrate the existing machines. We determined the operating states from the stack lights and transmitted the information to Energy Manager. So we now have a direct correlation between operating state and energy use. The relationship between states and energy data can be recorded and analyzed via the energy manager server. Get you on mute. Get, I hope you can hear me. You are back, I think so. Um, can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you again. Okay, Welcome back. yeah, sorry. <laughs> that must have been the, the video then. So basically yeah. what they did... Get, we have just three minutes left. We are already a bit over. Just okay, minutes. good. So basically what they did is they, they took the, the signal lights, they took the, uh, some meters and collected that in a simple PLC um, to get a graph like this. And what it turned out is that a lot of times the machines were in standby. And this is basically what they um, have been working on to say, okay, good, how can we improve on, on those kind of things? And simply shutting down of a machine in the weekend already gave them sometimes a reduction, reduction of around about 30%. Um, for instance, what they did is the oven, uh, they looked at what temperature um, should melt uh, aluminum be kept to keep it fluid. And instead of keeping it at 835 degrees, they kept it at 720 degrees during the weekend saving them 27% of the original weekend consumption. So basically what it does is that all the orange flakes, they have been able to reduce. And to put some pricing on it, the investment per machine was around about 2,000 euros. And the um, what they did uh, about it is that um, within one year's time, so it says two years, but look at the price over here, in one year's time, all of this investment, so 75 times 2,000 uh, euros, was um, gained back in uh, just these, um, uh, just within one year. But um, what you see right now is that in more modern machines, um, a lot of the, the data is already available because a lot of the sensors that you're using in there, 
they have already intelligence in it. So if you have a lot of these um, metering devices like circuit breakers or something like that, most of the time they already have an intelligence in there. And this intelligence, whether it be communicated through different, um, different sorts of, of, of signals and, and field buses that are available, they can all be captured and then summarized and put together into an overall uh, viewing system. So this is where it comes then back and this is how you can make charts out of it. So um, if I click on it, um, then you see that um, this is now live from the same manufacturing, all the different data live in production right now. So um, if I go to um, the organization and I simply click on the machine itself, Then you can really zoom in on the dashboard and say, okay, good, this production line, how good is it producing at this very moment? And then you see this different production data and then you can say, okay, good, uh, I want to see the uh, volume, uh, the value uh, per month. And if it's now a bit of a fast connection. It is not. Okay, yep, yeah, there is. So, and basically what, what you then see is that, for instance, over here, there is a very big peak value. And it's basically on those peak values that you need to work on. Because what we did um, with that particular uh, company then afterwards, is that we said, okay, good, there is very little peaks, but it's these peaks that cost you a lot of money. So, and basically what you need to do is try to get the peaks out and, and make that consumption uh, in a later phase. And then you can avoid um, having this. And with the newest version, there's even uh, with the new uh, renewable energy that is getting there, there's sometimes even energy available. So you should all be also be working on, yeah, if you're not using anything, but energy is for free, maybe you can start something else. And it's those kind of things that you need to work on. With one particular company who had three peaks in just one year, we managed to change the behavior of the production itself. And you can see the data on the right side what the return on investment was. So in less than half a year, an investment of around about 45,000 euros to have the measurement and the control um, was uh, amortized in less than uh, half a year. Some applications, Coca-Cola has been using this mainly for working on CO2 reduction. Um, who else? Picolin, for instance, a company in Spain. Um, they were really working on, okay, energy consumption, 14% less electrical power and 40% less natural gas. And um, another one is, for instance, Knauf, which we did in uh, the United Kingdom. Um, they were mainly focusing on um, really reducing the amount of tons of CO2 emission. So maybe I'll stop over here. Uh, that we can connect different plants uh, together is uh, probably not a surprise to you. So maybe we could go to uh, the questions itself. Um, if you would need some more contact, so uh, me, myself, I was uh, here to call um, Arno Maas is within the Bilux organization responsible for energy management, and um, he's here present with me in the room. And um, we have also Michel Gonzalez, um, who is participating in this live meeting at this very moment. So he can be your contact in Luxembourg as well. Thank you, Gerd. Very impressive presentation. Also shocking, I have to say, to some extent, considering that we are talking about a factor eight uh, cost increase when it comes to energy. Um, and you clearly stated energy. Are we talking electricity? Also, when it comes to EMS tools, what are we actually measuring? Is, is it just the electricity or is it more? I maybe jumped over it a little bit uh, faster, uh, Joe, but um, you, made, you might have seen that in, in the applications itself, um, we can, we can uh, then, of course, by means of calculation, we can uh, re look how much you uh, on CO2 you can be reducing. Um, there's uh, companies that contact us, they say, okay, good, can we um, see where the dropouts in, in compressed air are, um, uh, water consumption, gas consumption, everything that, that let, let me put it this way, everything that is measurable and you can put in a chart, you can put on uh, the uh, efficiency monitor on it to see where are my peaks and how can I, can I work on that. But the basic thought was, was of course, uh, energy consumption at the very okay. start. Interesting. We have a second question from Mark Christen uh, asking uh, if there is any possibility on maturity assessment regarding uh, uh, energy management. Um, there are possibilities. Uh, Mark, I will park that uh, question for a moment. 
I come to that because we have an interesting event where you might be able to learn about more about the opportunities you have here in Luxembourg. Um, one point I like also to make, uh, um, uh, I like to point out from the presentation from Gerd, Gerd was talking about the peaks and what many people in Luxembourg do not know is that actually the, the bill for your electricity is actually based on the peak. Uh, so if you get control over your peak due to the introduction of the EMS system and what belongs to it when it comes to the interconnectivity, it can really help you to immediately bring down the uh, uh, the cost for electrical energy. Yep. If there are no further questions, again, due to the sake of time, uh, then I would move on. Uh, Gerd, thank you very much for your presence. Thanks for the very interesting uh, presentation. You're welcome. Let me just start my next presentation. And this is uh, Mark uh, Christen, uh, why I was waiting with my answer. Actually, I'd really like to promote our Smart Manufacturing Week, uh, which will this year surely continue to concentrate on manufacturing, but there will also be on the first day, a full afternoon on energy management. And actually there are a lot of providers in the area of um, assessments that can help you um, uh, that can help you in these kind of assessments. Um, and uh, so audience feel invited to register for this important um, initiatives that we are running from Lux Innovation. It's actually coordinated by my colleague, uh, Caroline, cluster manager for material and uh, manufacturing. And uh, the second day will be pretty much focusing on smart manufacturing again, combined with automotive. And the third day will be on construction industry and materials. So have a closer look on the agenda. It's a physical meeting at the Chambre de Commerce. And uh, it's certainly also a great, great networking event after two years being in the pandemic. Also, I'd like to remind on the next DIH talk, which will be on the 17th of June. It will focus on cybersecurity, on OT and IT. Um, and also here, I can guarantee you that we have already won some very interesting guest speakers. Now, finally, we come to a new element that we have now, uh, that we will do first time today. Um, we, we had the idea of this uh, sneak preview, uh, actually uh, to give an opportunity to newcomers, startups, niche players, or somebody who has the smaller solutions available that actually fit under the topic of today's discussion of the discussion of that EIH talk. So we will give an eight minute slot to those companies that have something to say in that area will be without a Q&A, but still it's a great opportunity also for smaller ones uh, to show maybe smaller, easier solution. And today I like to welcome Michael Deloche from the company CP Solution. And Michael, the floor is yours. Please introduce yourself and what you like to share with the audience. Thank you. This good morning, uh, everybody. Uh, let me just uh, share my screen. So uh, first, thanks to the DIH to uh, give me the opportunity to, uh, um, for that sneak preview of our software that we call uh, Pluto. But before, uh, let me give you a, a quick uh, uh, introduction of myself. So I'm Michael Deloge, I'm the marketing director of CP Solution. I am 50 years old and I realize that I spend more than half of my lifetime in industrial automation and digitalization. And I like to present myself as a, an evangelist of a pragmatic approach of digitalization. And as a, an old automation guy, I have an automation system at home for energy management and uh, anything else uh, that we can monitor. CP Solution works with different vendors to provide solutions around automation, like supervision, field networks, and anything 
from the front floor, uh, data management for acquisition, archiving, and analysis, as well as cloud solution, uh, either full cloud or hybrid solutions. But let's switch to Pluto. Pluto is a software uh, that we use for reporting, dashboarding, and monitoring. Uh, it's a software that is uh, modern and simple, uh, modern in a way that it uses latest technology, and simple in the way that uh, it is a tool that you learn in few hours only, and it is a tool for the users, not for the engineers or for the integrators. It's a tool for the people who are going to use it. It's a tool for data analysis, energy, but anything else as well. Anything you can measure, we'll be able to, uh, to use Pluto for. It is an everyday tool because data analysis is not things you do once and, that, and you leave it like this forever. It's something you change and you have to work on it every single day. So the tool has been designed to be used every day. It's a tool you can use for multiple views, multiple apps. So it fits different users, different functions, uh, different level of users and everything. And more than everything, it's a tool that is based on 25 years of experience of the French uh, developer who has been working in the automation for more than 30 years and who has been seeing the different challenges of the industrial people. Let me show you quickly how that works. When you connect to the tools, you get to the dashboard and I can, for example, uh, go to my building energy and go my 2022 and see one of my reports for that building. I can scroll down uh, to have some more detail and I can easily, if I click on the bottom right icon, take a second view with the same report and then select my second report to see, for example, two different dates. I can do the same, for example, for two different machines, machine A, machine B, and compare easily my two reports. These reports, when they are built, they can easily be sent automatically to the different people who need it, uh, by email or anything else, put it on the repository somewhere. You can have different type of reports, like for example here, uh, a data center report, which is more uh, dedicated to that kind of industry. You can also go to the monitoring section where I can view my dashboard. Um, dashboard like this one, for example, I can have my KPIs for all my energy, whatever they are, electricity, water, or heating. Uh, I have some more detail about the electricity usage and so on and so on. But let me show you another thing, which is how you view it from a mobile application. I will see the same type of information on my mobile. I will have this. I can view my smart building consumption and I can have my energy here, for example, on my KPIs. Now, let me show you how you get to that. When I am on a designer, as I said, the tool has been made to make it to, make, to be easy to use, easy to configure. I will just drag and drop uh, one of my uh, uh, bar graph, for example. I will configure the tag I want to see, and I will go into my database. In this case, my database is a MySQL database, but this system can connect to any type of source, all the SCADA system from the market, for example. I can use a Siemens SCADA system. I can use a model SCADA system. It doesn't matter, really. I can go to multiple type of database, all kind of source I can use. Here, I'm going to select my meter elect offices. I will ask for the index deviation and I will select on the left my uh, period, which I, for example, going to select my current 15 days. And Michael, I go to my graphics there. Michael, yes. one minute, please. Yes. Okay. Uh, I will duplicate the graphics, for example, and by duplication, I can. Uh, Instead of having my index deviation, change my function to be accumulation, and I got my accumulated consumption. Very easily, I can add another trend if needed on the first one, for example, by just adding, uh, duplicating the tag and selecting, for example, a different period, the 15 days before the current 15 days. And I got my comparison for the different period. 
I can also do, for example, data filtering, like working hours, not working hours, weekend, or whatever. And I, if I want to build an application on mobile, I will simply create a new report, put the value I want to add on it. So just in the same way, I'm selecting the value, select the, uh, the function I want, select the period I want, and then I create my mobile application here. I will just select the name, username, password, icon, pages. And for each icon, I select the report I want, my mobile report in that case. And in the mobile, it will just go like this. I access it, put the password, select my icon pages, and I get my reports within a few seconds. So you don't need to be very knowledgeable in any programming, Python, or whatever, it's a very simple tool to use for everyday reporting. And one last, one last advice I would like to give you is think about the volume of data when you think about your energy. Just to give you an example, I have a home automation system at home. My simple system for my house has already more than 3 million of records uh, for only a few, uh, few years of running and it's only an house. So think about that. You really need to think about how much data you're going to use. And for that, if you want to know more about some uh, uh, interesting database system, I can also give you uh, some more information on that. So I've tried to be as quick as I can, Joe. Um, I know. I, know I hope you could, you could follow. And uh, if you have any questions, if you want to be more, have more detail, just contact me directly or contact the DIH. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Michael. Um, and uh, I think that connects well to a question that came in, uh, overlooked it, sorry, uh, came in from Michael Pengiani, uh, asking, if, yeah, you need a lot of sensors and actors, this is true, and we will not be able to answer that today, but again, this is also a nice topic that will be covered during the manufacturing week, and again, I'd like to invite you to come and join us on the Smart Manufacturing Week, as well as I'd like to remind to fill out the survey. And for today, special thanks to Michael, Petro, and Gerd for your interesting presentations. Very much appreciated. I hope you will also get in some interesting contacts due to the discussion of today with some of potential clients. And I hope the audience found it quite interesting uh, today. So um, thanks again. Thanks also for those that joined the discussion today. Hopefully see you physically at the Smart Manufacturing Week or at uh, uh, again at the next DIH talk. Uh, I wish you a great day, great weekend. Thank you very much to all of you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye bye.